Salve a tutti, buongiorno, buonasera, and as usual, this is Mano Venditti from Italy Medisi, and today I have a very special guest, uh, Gabriel Weiner, and he's a, well, he's a many, he's many things, he's a, he's a mechanical engineer and an opera singer, but the reason you're here is that you, it's because you're a polyglot and you're a language expert. At this point, yeah, that's sort of become what my life is about at this point, it's been a sort of strange journey. It's weird how things take different turn at some point and then you end up doing something that is totally unpredictable or yeah. predicted when you started. Um, so the reason I have you here is, um, I, I mean, I followed you a little bit and I, I know you've done a workshop on Creative Live, which is a platform that if you out there don't know it, I love. It's ma mainly for photographers, but now it, they've kind of extended their range of talks. And what they do is they offer live streaming three-day workshops. And you had one specifically on learning languages yeah that's it's what a really neat platform they, they've developed something pretty amazing now oh, it's amazing uh -huh. i mean love yeah. i spent the last yeah. two days on it <laughs> um, so you're up so you run a blog yes which is called fluent forever now recently you've done a, a was it a kickstarter kickstarter project or kickstarter. yeah that was back in uh december and january is when that ran and that was to create to develop an app to help people learn a language. It was a, was a, it's mainly a pronunciation tool. Correct. Okay. Uh, that's great because I, I do focus on pronunciation. I made this mistake with English. As you, you know, as you know, I'm Italian. And with English, I never cared about pronunciation. Mm. I did for Portuguese and Spanish. And when I'm in those countries, I do... Okay, I can trick people into thinking I am native, whereas with English, I never cared. Now, with English, I think we are lucky, in a very lucky position, foreigners learning English, because English speakers are used to hearing foreigners with an accent. I'm not justifying so, yeah. it, but other yeah. cultures no, no. have a much harder time. As you know, Italians only speak Italian, and they're not very used to hearing Italian spoken with a different accent. Yeah. So it's really hard to be understood. I think what's interesting about English, uh, I mean, you make a good point that, yes, uh, English speakers are used to hearing English with different accents, um, but we have different tolerance for different accents. Yeah. Uh, if we hear English spoken with an Italian accent, with a French accent, with an English accent, we think, oh, that's so cute, that's so yeah. foreign, well, great. Mm -hmm. uh, as soon as someone comes in with a Chinese accent, a Japanese accent, uh, even a, a Spanish or Mexican accent, if you're out in, in California or something, uh, you get a very, very different reaction. And, and it's there's nothing fair about it it's just <laughs> you, but it's hard you get you get some hard reactions to people do you reckon is that because it's harder to understand or it's more of a intolerance aspect i think in the case of um of spanish speakers it's more of an intolerance aspect mm. uh because why should that be any different from an italian speaker yeah, yeah. Um, but I, when we're bad we're bad the same way <laughs> right <laughs> but uh the i think it's just because uh you have an immigration issue here where, where you have, you actually, we actually encounter a lot of Spanish speakers where the, the Italian accent, you don't, you don't show up, it doesn't show up that often. And so yeah. you think, oh, this is new. Sure. Um, in the case of uh, Chinese speakers and Japanese speakers, I think that is really a, an understanding issue where anytime that you have a hard time understanding what someone's saying, uh, you start feeling bad. Yeah, it's true. And you, you don't know where to ascribe this. Actually, there was a creative live workshop about this, uh, like, a week ago on the power of habits, just like about psychology. Uh -huh. And I mean, they're saying if, if you have a hard time understanding someone for any reason, for a bad cell phone connection, because of an accent, because whatever, uh, you start feeling bad and you don't know where to put that, that feeling. You're like, I don't know why I'm feeling bad. And usually when it comes with an accent, you think this person is making me feel bad. And so you get, you get short with them. So, uh, and that, that happens with Chinese and Japanese speakers especially, I think. True, true. Uh, I see that. So your approach, I think it's very similar to what I do. When I teach Italian, I start from the sound of the language. And I see that you do the same. Yeah, absolutely. Is there a reason why you start from the sound, from the pronunciation? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, it's, well, I used to do it because just from history I and mean, from the way I had approached languages. Uh, I started this way because this is how I, uh, I learned French and Italian and German through my music training. I mean, as an opera singer, they teach you how to pronounce the language long before you even know how, what any of it means. What it means, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
because I mean, you can't, you just can't show up on a stage and start sounding, have a good thick, thick, thick American accent. It's just not acceptable. Yeah. And so they, they drill in a really, really good accent very early on. And so I, I had the, the, the gift of being able to take, you know, one semester of French and Italian pronunciation only. It's all we did. It's just pronunciation. I had a semester of German and English pronunciation and that's all we did. And then later when I came into those languages and started trying to learn them, I found, okay, well, this is a lot easier. Um, but that has since uh, developed a bit further in that I, um, after sort of, after getting the book contract and after being able to spend, I mean, I spent the last two and a half years of my life, like spending only working on my book mm -hmm. <laughs> and only <laughs> researching it and, and just having this, this, gift really of being able to spend every single minute of my life trying to figure out why does this work and can I make this better? Um, and so in the course of the last two and a half years, I've, I've sort of looked at the research and found that if you start with pronunciation, you're in a position to actually remember words. Uh, if you, if you can't hear really the difference between uh, caro, carro and caro, you're screwed. <laughs> Yeah. You don't, you don't, you just don't know how to, how to take in this information and store it in your head. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you know the two words, but I find one, one confusing pronunciation in Italian, really tricky. The difference between anno and anno. Mm. That's yeah. a, that's a very embarrassing one if you don't get it right. And it's like, and in, in, in this happens all over the place. And this is not, I mean, in Italian is relatively friendly as they come. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I, I started, I started Hungarian uh, with the book. I mean, I just, I, I would write a chapter on pronunciation and then I'd learn Hungarian pronunciation and I'd learn, you know, simple words. And then I'd write a chapter on simple words. And Hungarian has these sounds like, I mean, it has the, the double consonants like Italian does. Uh, so there's like, but, but sometimes it'll have them at the end of words. So you'll have things like odd and odd with an extra, with the double D, uh, but they also have long vowels. And so you need to know the difference between core and core mm -hmm. where the O is extra long. Uh, these sorts of things, if you can't hear them, there's no way you have a chance of remembering anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I find pronunciation essential just in the beginning to form a foundation. And then also, if, any, if you want to have anyone ever talk to you, yes. <laughs> which is usually someone's goal in learning a language, uh, it's much, much easier to start, as you've, you've noticed with Portuguese and stuff, to, to start with decent pronunciation habits than to try to fix old habits. Yeah. yeah. So, something I want to uh, talk to you about a bit later is you've developed a I, I mean, I'm not sure if you've developed it, but you have a process that you use to learn a language in a very short period of time. And first, before we get to that, I'd like to talk about, because I'm sure you agree with me, the myth about it takes a long time to learn a language, and if you start when you're too old, you can't learn it. E, it's yeah, I hate this one. Crap, right? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's rough. Uh, people have heard this, this idea, and I know why, I mean... It, the reason people have this idea that you can't learn languages when you're an adult is because you struggle with it in a classroom. Mm -hmm. you, you take whatever five, I took five and a half years of Russian myself and learned yeah. nothing. nothing. I had good yeah. teachers. I had really good teachers. I really liked them. Uh, but I, I studied and studied. I did well on my tests and then I didn't know any Russian at the end. Mm -hmm. And people have this experience. They do the exact same thing and then they show up in France and there's this five-year-old child who speaks better French than you. And you think, ah, this, <laughs> this stupid <laughs> child, why, why do they learn it better than me? Uh, and it's the, it's, you're making an unfair comparison in all of these cases. Every time you see this little five-year-old kid who speak, who's correcting your Italian, which this is my experience. I, I went to, to Perugia <laughs> uh, and, and went to the, the Università per gli Stranieri. And it was just, I mean, a wonderful experience. But I, we were living with an Italian family and there was a four-year-old kid <laughs> and she was correcting our like the, the, my Italian all the time. She'd just mm -hmm. sit there and be like, "No, no, you're doing it wrong," and correct me. And which was great. I mean, it's yeah. great to have kids are great because they don't they don't have any problem telling you when you're wrong. They'll tell you, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's great. But still, you have this experience. Like, why does this kid know better Italian than me? I've been working at this. So this isn't fair. And it's the the kid has had twenty thousand hours of Italian. They've only been speaking Italian their whole life. They've been people have come up to them and spoken to them purposefully and just said, no, 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 this is this, this is this. Uh, and you're sitting there with your hundred hours in a classroom, maybe. Yeah. And you think, well, why don't I, uh, why aren't I as good as this kid? Well, that kid's had 200 more times the uh, exposure that you've had. Um, 
But when you actually look at the research, when you really uh, control for it, you say, okay, what about a kid with 500 hours of Spanish? He moves to Spain when he's five or four, and now he's had 500 hours of Spanish. And then you take an adult and you put them in class for 500 hours. Uh, the adult wins every single time. Adults are better at learning languages than kids. I mean, we, we have, we're smarter. We have, we've learned how to learn. That's right. That's what, I, that's what I tell my students. Is that if, you're, if you're 30, you have 30 years of experience speaking your language, which means you're a linguist. Yeah. How old is it? <laughs> so. And you've, you've had experience learning other things. I mean, you've had yeah. experience taking in information of all sorts and, and processing it, which kids just don't know how to do, which it's not their fault. They just haven't learned it yet. Yeah. So as an adult, we're actually in a much better place to learn languages. The, the main problem with being an adult is that we have other stuff to do. Mm -hmm. We have our jobs. We have our work. We have well, at work. Same thing. We have, you know, our, our love lives. We have our, our, our everything else we want to do. And it takes time. And so how much time do you have to spend on a language? Because if you had 18 hours a day, like these kids have, yes, then you will pick up a language within two, three months. Yeah, totally. So uh, as some of you already know, and Italian is considered a category one language for English speakers, which means it's the easiest language to pick up for English speakers. And it's estimated that you can get to the fluency level, as in you can get a job in that language, within 400 to 600 hours. That's not much at all. It's like, it's two hours a day for a year mm. to get really do good. So what's your experience? I know that you picked up French very quickly. Yeah. How long did it take you to, to feel, yeah, I'm okay with French? Uh, French was an interesting experience. Uh, French, I spent an hour a day on the subway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that, I mean, because that's all the time I had. The at, at, the, at the time, I had an hour a day uh, of commuting. Mm -hmm. And then on Sundays, I had some time. Yes. Because I was, I was doing two master programs in Vienna. And I had, uh, I mean, I was just doing classes six days a week. And so Sundays were my only real day, day off. Um, and so I did an hour, basically an hour a day of reviews. And then I did an extra chunk of time. And on average, now that I'm starting to really take good notes about how long does this take me, yes. uh, it's about an equal amount of time. So I'm guessing around seven hours of reviews, seven hours of, of building flashcards. Because my, my week, per week, per week, yeah. per week. Yeah. So we're looking at about two hours a day. Okay. Um, and I did this for three months. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had started with, with, a, with a base, meaning I started uh, because of my opera experience, I started with knowing how to pronounce French more or less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and in those three months, I picked up around, well, it was 3,000 flashcards or so, um, meaning I probably had a vocabulary of around 1,400, 1,500 words. Which is more um, than usually needed anyway. Yeah, because sure. you know, a thousand is usually a good number. Yeah, to understand. Um, I showed up to an immersion program. This is all in preparation for an immersion program. Uh -huh. um, I showed up after those three months at this immersion program, and I took my entrance interview. And I was uh, hoping to get <laughs> into the intermediate level uh, uh -huh. because I this is sort of some backstory in the book. But I, I cheated on this placement test. I did. I. I. I, I didn't. I knew Italian already. I didn't want to be in level one of French. Yeah, masculine, feminine, blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like I know this stuff already. I want to be a little bit faster. There's a level one and a half that I wanted <laughs> to get into, uh, and so I cheated on this placement test, and I did too well. I. I did <laughs> cheated too well. They you put me in the intermediate level, and I panicked. And this is why I developed this thing, honestly, is because I was in. I didn't want to embarrass myself at this interview. And so I show up at this interview, and I found that I actually understood everything that the teacher said mm -hmm. in French, without because none of my none of my flashcards, nothing I learned was in English. There was no translation involved in any of this. And so everything they said, I understood, and I actually knew what to say in response. I had this little French dictionary in my head mm -hmm. that was one hundred percent in French, and so. We had a conversation, and at the end of the conversation, she says, you know, you're, you shouldn't be in the intermediate level. You should be in the advanced level. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> and so she bumped, and it was fine. No, that's the other thing is that I, they bumped me up to this advanced level, and it was just fine. I, I was not behind anyone. Uh, awesome. And so we read 10 books. I wrote 70 pages of essays. We just discussed philosophy and playwrights all day. And I was comfortable and happy in this immersion program all the way through. By the end of it, I hit C1 Fluency. That's a seven-week program. And so, so we're talking seven about plus the initial three months. Yes. So we're talking about three months of two hours a day and then seven weeks of immersion. And by the end of it, I had C1 fluency. That's excellent. Excellent. And it yeah. was 
yeah. And by the end of it, I thought, well, this is, I mean, this has saved me so much time. People need to know about this. Yeah. I mean, I see that. Um, it's funny because you attended uh, USA in California and yeah. I teach at USC here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the University of the Sunshine Coast. It's Got the same it. acronym. But uh, I see that with my students. Mm. And, you know, in academia, most students will do what you said before. Go to class and finish without even knowing much. Yeah. And then you got two who are really passionate and they will do the work and then they will be fluent by the end of it. Mm. In that degree. Um, so what I see in, um, in what's my point? I'm, I'm trying to say you could go through a, a whole three year course and not get to a point where you feel comfortable, but you can, in your case, in less than a year, because in seven weeks plus three months, well, that's 25 weeks, whatever, is that half a year? Yeah. And you reached top level for fluency. Yeah. I mean, the, the, I think one of the issues with, with being a language teacher and being a language student, I mean, the, the sole issue with, with language learning, um, what people want when they come into a program is they want someone to give them a language. Yeah. <laughs> You show up and you say, okay, I'm going to sit here and you give me Italian. And you, with a magic just wand, just in. give me the language, yeah. Yeah, just give it to me. I'm going to sit here, I'm going to do the things you tell me to do, and you just give it to me. Yes. And the, I think the main issue with this is that you cannot be given a language passively. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think that it's, it's, there's something, everything needs to be turned around in some sense, that, that you have to be, if you're going to be taught anything, you need to be taught how to take a language. Yeah. And then how to just take these resources and put them in your head. And if you know how to do that, then you can go very fast, but you have to know how, and then you have to be willing to do it. Yes. Well, it's the same, it's the same with sports. I often use the analogy with baseball and say, I can show you how to bet. And then you can say, yeah, I've learned it, but until you've done it 2000 times, you can't do it anyway. It's, it's more of a, it's, it's a doing skill. It's not a listening as in not listening as in, taking it in skill. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's, it, it's interesting because it's, um, people look at language a lot like a practice makes perfect kind of thing where it's like a, well, people either look at it like just, I'm going to sit here and you put it in yeah. it never works. Uh, but then if people are really going to do the work, they think of it like a practice makes perfect thing where if I just do this 2000 times, it's going to fix everything. I'm going to learn how to do it. And, and it's actually a lot better than that. The story ends up being a lot easier and a lot better than that, which is that if you, um, like if, if you're going to learn how to drive a car, you learn how to use the gas pedal and you learn how to use the brakes. You learn how to, you know, use the, the, the steering wheel and eventually everything becomes automatic and you can kind of drive your way to work without thinking about it. But with language learning, you learn how to use the gas pedal. You learn how to use the brakes. You learn how to use the steering wheel. And suddenly you can do like anything. You can start conjugating verbs you've never seen before. Yeah, that's right. You yeah. can, you can guess where the, where the stress is going to be in a word without even looking it up. And you get this intuition about words that you've never seen this is like being able to, you, you learn how to drive a car and suddenly it's like, okay, now I can, uh, now I can drive a ship. I can yeah. drive a jet plane. Plane, I plane. can do anything. <laughs> yeah. It's like you can do language is better than practice makes perfect. Is. Language and is if you practice right, you can do things that you've, you never had done before. And it, it is exponential. I mean, everybody knows that once you learn one language, the second one is a lot easier Yeah. because you've learned how to learn a language. And that's, yes. that's why I, it's like, it's like musicians. It's hard to find a musician who only plays one instrument. But they're not geniuses. I mean, that's like you find people who won't not, don't usually speak just one foreign language. Mm. You know, I speak four, you speak probably four or five. Working on six, yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, but that's, we're not geniuses. It's just because we figured out how to do it. And then yeah. adding. So uh, talking about Italian, so you did an immersion program in Perugia. Now, it's a very yeah. famous location for uh, language immersion. Now, I haven't done it myself. Do you have any, it's heaven. Feedback, <laughs> any feedback on that particular program in Perugia? Because it's one of the most popular. Ah, yes, I do. Um, or... Yes, I mean, in terms of, God. All right, I've had two, two main immersion experiences. Well, I've had a lot of immersion experiences, but I've had two sort of categories. I've done immersion programs at Middlebury, Vermont, yep. uh, in the Middlebury Language School programs. These are sort of famous for their intensity. Uh, and then I've done this one in, in Perugia. And the ones in Vermont, you, you show up, you sign a contract that says, if I speak one word that is not Italian, 
I'm going to get kicked out and I'm going to have no, my money not refunded. <laughs> yes. And it's expensive. Those programs are extremely expensive. They're, I think right now they're, they're around $8,000. And how long is a program? Seven weeks. Okay. Oh, that's the one you did. Yeah. 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 And so th these are like, they have good financial aid. Like you can, you can actually, if, if you can't afford $8,000 for a program, you probably can afford the program because they'll just give you grants. Like <laughs> yeah. it's sort of this, this weird backwards thing. If you can afford it, then you won't get much. But if you can't, if, which very few people can afford 8,000, like yeah. they gave us, they gave me tons of grant money just to come. And lots funny, of yeah. financial aid. Awesome. But those programs are extremely intense. You learn fast because you have to. But, but you're in America. And you're in America. Yes. And there's the, yeah. And so there's these, these two <laughs> things going on. So one thing is that most of your Italian uh, is coming. You are getting a lot of native speaker input, but a lot of your input is coming from other students who have bad accents, who have, who are students. Yeah. And so that has some pluses in that you're more comfortable speaking because everyone's making mistakes. So why can't you too? This is a good thing. But two, you can come in there with a very, very good accent, for instance, and come out of there with a worse accent. Oh, interesting. And so there's some issues with that. Now, in contrast, if, uh, my experience in Perugia, um, we had more class time. We had 30 hours of class instead of 20 hours of class a week. Oh, that's heaps. And it was cheaper. I think it ended up being like, I think they, at that time they were charging like 600 euros for a semester for a, for a month. That's pretty good. That's great. Cool. Oh, yeah, good. and so and Middlebury is included all uh, you you that that giant giant sum of money that that's also living expenses that's also oh, right. food that's everything. Whereas in Perugia, so, you have to look after your your own. Yeah. yeah, and so you know you have to pay rent and you have to pay for food and that that ends up being whatever a thousand euros a month something like yeah. this. I mean it's it's you know that that costs money too, but it ends up being cheaper potentially. It can be cheaper. You're getting more class, but um, in Middlebury you're getting four hours of homework a night. <laughs> every night you have four hours of class four hours of homework and you are working 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 in Perugia eh. <laughs> go out and have a, have a beer with Italian go food. have a beer yeah you have like a half hour of homework a night maybe if you feel like it yeah. you know it's Italy um, in Middlebury as soon as you leave class people are still speaking only in Italian in Perugia you're taking a break every 45 minutes for espresso yes because it's important. Yeah. The teacher needs it. The teacher we cannot have to do it. Yes. Yeah, it's just we not, not going to happen. Six coffees a day in, otherwise you can't function. Six, it's like, <laughs> it's like ten. Um, and so every forty-five minutes, you take the the coffee break, and in every forty-five minutes, for fifteen minutes, all the other students who are coming from all over the world find you and speak to you in English. You're and gold so that, for them, yeah, because you speak yes, English. Yes, because you are the the person who's going to teach them better English, and so. You, the, the idea of having this immersion experience where you are speaking only in Italian and thinking only in Italian for two months, it's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and so I learned a lot in Perugia. I mean, and I, and, and, but I would have learned more Italian in Middlebury. That mm -hmm. being said, Italian is my favorite language because I was in Perugia, because I got to experience the culture, because I, it's heaven, because oh, the food is heaven, the, the climate is heaven, the people are heaven. I mean, I, I, and every single word in Italian is not dry. There's no, there's no sense of, okay, this is the word for this, this is the word for that. It's gelato is this thing that I ate at this place and this place and this place, and it was the best thing I've ever eaten. Mm -hmm. And so this word now has all this flavor, literally, <laughs> that, that the words that I learned in Middlebury don't have. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know what's better. <laughs> It's really, it's, it's hard to make that decision. I think that there were some amazing things that I got out of Perugia that I would have never gotten out of Middlebury. But if I look from a raw, like, how is my Italian? My Italian is right now my worst language because, because I went to Perugia. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know a good answer for that. I honestly, I, 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 I would recommend the program very, very highly, but people should know that, that you need to be careful about who you talk to. You need to be careful about... I mean, tell people you're from somewhere else. I mean, come in there, make sure you have, you don't have an American accent, make sure you have a good Italian accent. And then come in there and be like, no, 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 I'm Russian. Like, I don't speak English. Yeah. And maybe that will help. Uh, but if you, yeah. I, I, similar thing. Um, I've traveled a lot and I, I yeah. remember being in, was it Dominican Republic? Where probably 80% of the tourism is Italians. Mm. And I didn't want to be bothered every step by them trying to talk to me in Italian and sell yeah. me stuff. 
I just pretended to be Portuguese because nobody speaks Portuguese. Yeah. Especially Portuguese <laughs> from Portugal. It's such a weird accent that nobody understands it. So I just pretended. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. I've never actually met someone who's tried it. I mean, I keep recommending it to people and I haven't done it yet. And I'm like, okay, so it does work. It does work. They leave you oh, alone. Good. Because it's hopeless. You cannot understand Portuguese unless you know Portuguese. Right. It's not like Spanish or Italian that you can kind of understand roughly, you know. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. I love yeah, it. I, no. I should try Hungarian. No one speaks Hungarian. Yeah, that's like Hungarian. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. Actually, I used Hungarian yesterday with my students as an example. The first day students. So we're talking about, you actually know a lot more than you think in Italian, simply because Italian is such a dominant culture in most countries. Like here in Australia, Italian is the second, well, now it's the third, but for the longest period, it was the second wide, most widely spoken language. It's like, really? yeah, it's the second language of, of Australia after English. Wow. Now it's after Chinese, but now we're the third, but it, it's a massive language and the culture is so Italian here. I mean, it, it's been colonized almost like everywhere you go, it's Italy. So what I was saying to them, and it's the same for most countries, there's Italian everywhere because if not just for the food, I mean, wherever you go, there's Italian menus. And I said, so you actually know what Italian words look like. That way you can find English words that are Latin based and you can use those in your, anyway, it was a long complex thing, but. My point was, my example was, you're lucky because you're approaching Italian that even though you're not aware of, you actually know a lot about. Yeah. It's not Hungarian because we don't know anything about Hungarian, most of us, unless we have a reason to know Hungarian. Yeah. And, it, and my example was that would be a very tough language to pick up because you're coming in not knowing much really, whereas with Italian, you know a lot. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, it's why, that's, that's the main reason I chose Hungarian is because yes. I wouldn't know anything. And you wanted to prove a point with your book, I suppose. I wanted to see what it's like. Yes. I mean, I, I, I like, for me, I, I've, over the course of learning these languages for my, for my singing, I fell in love with the process. I like the process more than speaking it, honestly. I, I like the idea of assembling this thing in your head that you can use. Uh, and so I, I really liked that process. And I've never, I had never done that process with a language that I had nothing. I mean, Hungarian, I had nothing. I didn't know one word. Yeah. Maybe one from my mother or something. My, my, my grandmother spoke Hungarian to my mm -hmm. mother, but she, did, she doesn't know it. And now I, I mean, now actually I know it decently well. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I wanted the experience of trying something from, from scratch. Yeah. And so Hungarian was perfect for that because it was really just, no one speak, no one knows anything about it. It's this orphan. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, now, I'm sure you, you can't really sum it up in three minutes, but... <laughs> Your book, Fluent Forever, How to Learn Any Language Fast and Never Forget It. What is the secret? What's the recipe that you are recommending? What's the, you know, maybe three step or whatever steps sure. to do it? Um, my book is about memory. In the end, my book is all about what does it take to remember something and, and how, how can you build a language learning system that, that takes advantage of that. And so memories for us are just connections. Uh, that's, that's all we do. There's no such, like, if you tell me, okay, I'm going to, you know, memorize this book. Well, how? <laughs> and usually what people will do is they'll just repeat it a lot, but that's actually not how we memorize. What we memorize is we, uh, we make associations between things. And so every single word, if you say a word like, like cane, this word has a sound component. It sounds like cane. It doesn't sound like cane and it doesn't sound like cane. It sounds like cane. And then that's, that's one part of this word, and it, it stimulates some part of your brain. And then that's associated to a spelling, C-A-N-E. And so those are now connected. Uh, and then usually what people do is they get that far, and then they say, okay, that's the word for dog. But they don't think about the fact that, 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 that Kane actually has, has four legs. It, has, it barks. It wags its tail. Like All those associations are built into dog for them. Like this English word dog has all these memories, has all these, these it, you can smell a dog, you can, you can see a dog in your head, but you can't actually see or smell a cane when you connect it to yep. dog. But as soon as you connect cane to this picture of an Italian dog and you find out what do Italians think of when they think of dogs? Like if you search on Google Images for a cane, you will find that the pictures are not the same mm -hmm. as do searching for dog. You'll find that for whatever reason, Italian dogs are always licking people <laughs> people are always laughing with Italian dogs. Uh -huh. There's like this, the dog is like this, this comic figure mm -hmm. in, at least in Google images. Yes. And that's enough for you to think, okay, well, this is a slightly new concept. This is something a little different 
from my idea of a dog, and that's enough for you to build a new memory, a completely new idea of what is a kame. And then you build from there. And so I, I build up, I start with sounds and spellings. I build up this base of being able to hear the language and spell it correctly. Uh, then I build in a bunch of words, simple words, you know, dog, cat, ball, mother. Uh, and then once I have some words, then I go to the grammar book and then I start assembling the grammar in Italian with no English involved. Uh, and so the, you just build up the language as it would build up in your memory. And it ends up just going really, really fast and being a lot of fun. It is fun. It is fun. Yeah. One question I had written down was, what's the best, best experience you had in your life directly related to you being able to speak a foreign language? Because, I mean, my life has been amazing because of languages. Gosh, I mean, I'm in Australia that. because of languages because I fell in love with somebody and blah, blah, blah. Life goes on because of yeah. something. So, yeah. That is a good question. Um, Honestly, my favorite part about speaking languages is, is meeting, my, meeting myself and meeting other people in those languages. Uh, I found that when I, um, when I speak Italian, I feel more happy. Mm -hmm. And I see a different side of myself than when I speak in English. Uh, when I speak in French, I, uh, there's a little more distance there. I can think about things that are hard to think about. I can talk about difficult emotional subjects and I feel like, you know, I could think about this intellectually and sort of talk yes. about it. Yeah. Uh, I remember what, I could have really difficult conversations with my ex-wife. Uh, we were we were in the French program together, and we could we could discuss all sorts of things that we couldn't discuss in English because yeah. it was like no 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 this is just French this is just a game. Yeah. Uh, you know, same thing with German. It, it, there's you you meet different parts of yourself, mm -hmm. and it's not uh, part of it feels like a game. Part of it feels like you're, you're I'm, I'm playing the French person. I'm playing an Italian person. I'm just acting one. But it's, you're, you're actually this person. You're, you actually, you are this person. They are a part of you. They're just a subset of you. And I, I don't know any other place in the world, any other, any, any other thing you can do that will show you different sides of yourself yeah. in quite, a, quite a, is, is intense a way. So that, that's, for me, that's, that's what I like about language learning is, is watching the changes in myself and then also watching the changes in other people. You, you go to these in, the immersion programs, where you meet people in French when they're not French native speakers, or you meet people in Russian or Italian, and then on the last day, everyone starts speaking English, and suddenly their personality just goes, <laughs> completely new person. And those changes, I find those amazing. It's just an amazing experience. Yeah, I love that too. I mean, each language I speak brings out a different personality in me. Yeah. I am very different depending on the language I speak. It's yeah. interesting, yeah. And I find... I've lived in different countries and I made, let's say, Japanese friends in Portugal and we spoke Portuguese. Yeah. And I went to visit them in Japan. Totally different people yeah. because of the language they were speaking and of course the environment, but it is bad how just a language can change everything. Anyway, that's it. Very interesting. Um, well, one final thing. So I'll yeah. let you go. Uh, you already shared what your strategy was. If you were to give three really easy, easy tips to somebody who's approaching Italian or any other language. Now, like complete blank, no nothing. What would the first thing that they should do, according to you? Um, just the, like which, which thing should they do first? Yeah. They should focus on pronunciation. pronunciation. Uh, they should, they should be, learn to hear the difference between double consonants. They should know anno and anno. They should, lo they should get every single one of these sounds in their ear and in their mouth. Uh, that's, that's absolutely the first, first, first thing to do. What's the second? Uh, the second, well, I mean, for me, I, I, I go through the sequence. I do that, and then okay, I get through a bunch of simple words, and then I get to grammar. Yeah. Uh, but if you're going to talk about a sequence, that's, that's what I would recommend, certainly, yeah. That's awesome. Okay, awesome. I mean, awesome. you were asking about tips. I think the, uh, probably the... One, the, one of the tips that will do the, the most for the, the shortest, like <laughs> if I were to say something in 30 seconds that would give the biggest benefit, uh, if you search for each one of your words uh, on Google Images, it's like the smallest thing. It's yeah. just you search for the word in Italian on Google Images or Google Images.it, like the, the Italian Google Images. Mm -hmm. uh, you will find that everything you think you know, you don't. I mean, every time you search for a noun or a verb on, on these things, you find that, that Italians think of everything differently. And yeah. that will be the case for every language. But Italians think yeah. of everything differently. And when, when you put in anything, you will find 
changes. And every one of those changes makes that word much, much more interesting, much more memorable. I like that tip. I'm going to use it as well. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> yeah, I find it really cool. So um, let's talk about quickly about your app. Is that finished? Is that ready? Is that available? Uh, the French one is, I think, like four days away from being finished. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 we've been beta testing it for two weeks now and now it's like, we're, I don't, there's not much left that's wrong with it. It's like we've fixed almost everything. Yeah. Um, let's see the French app's coming out in a few days. Uh, German will come out in like three weeks, Spanish in probably five weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, then comes Mandarin Chinese, then Italian. Mm -hmm. Um, and then basically it started to go a lot faster. The French took me five months. Like German's going to take me three weeks. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, I have fifteen languages. I think I need to do, wow. uh, and then I have to do all the reverse ones. I have to do English for Italian speakers, and then French oh, for, for, for uh, English the for French speakers. project. <laughs> but it's, no, I'm hoping to finish it in the year. We'll see. Uh, I told people I finished in August, and then I had no idea how much work this was. But it's, I, I'm hoping. I think I can do this all in a year. What does the app do? The app. I, mean, I know, uh, but <laughs> can you tell us? Sure, sure, sure. The, the app, basically, um, there's some research showing exactly how you train uh, to hear new sounds. Like in the beginning, if you say, okay, well, this word is ano and this word is anno, you can tell people those are different, but they won't actually hear it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and especially if you get some sounds that are very, very close, uh, especially close to English, where you have something like, um, you can say the sound chu, like I chew some food, uh, and in Hungarian, you have a sound like "tu," and then you have a second sound "tu," and they sound exactly the same. The sun, right? I know they sound all the same. <laughs> and and so, how do you learn this? Well, uh, this app basically shows if you if you present both of these sounds and you say, "Okay, there's two sounds, "tu" and "ju." I'm going to say one of them. Tell me which one, "ju." And you say, "I think it's the one with the G." Yeah, Every time you guess, and then it tells you, "No, no, no, you're wrong. It's this one," or "or you're right. It's this yeah. one." Um, this guessing process and this process of getting feedback trains your ear uh, in a way that nothing else does, nothing else we found does. Uh, and so this app basically takes someone step by step and forces their ear to, to hear the new sounds in the language, uh, shows them all of the spellings that create these sounds, yeah. and builds up a foundation so that by the end of this app, maybe two weeks, three weeks of doing half an hour a day, uh, you know all of the sounds of Italian, you know all the spellings of Italian, you can just forget about that and work on words. Yeah. And so it jumps through this first step for you. How many pairs would a language have? It, well, it depends on the language, but... It depends on the language, yeah. yeah. Um, in French, I think I ended up with the ones I used. I mean, I recorded 600, 700 pairs. Wow. Um, but the ones I used, I think I used 170 pairs. Okay. So that's, that seems to be about what's right. I'm seeing similar numbers for German, similar numbers for Spanish. Uh, but it ends up being, you know, what's, and that's, that's about as, as much as you can do in about two weeks. That that's ends up being a comfortable amount to do in two weeks. Cool. And your book, when is that coming out? That's coming out in eight days. Wow. <laughs> eight days. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, August 5th. The book comes out on August 5th. First book for you? Yes. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this has been a monster. This has been two and a half years of my life, every hour of it. Good, well, so, good luck with that. Exciting. Yeah. Thank you. I'll, um, I'll definitely include a link to the book for anybody Please who's, do. who's interested. Because, uh, yeah, I think what you said earlier, and then we'll wrap it up, but the main thing for people approaching any new language is really learning how to learn a language more than yes. the specific of learning Italian or learning Spanish. So the specifics are easy. It's the how to learn yeah. the language that's the tricky part. So, yeah, I definitely think your book can really help. Yeah. No, I, I think, I, I'm hoping that it's going to help a lot of people because, I mean, people come at this and they, they really, I mean, it's something people want so badly. Yeah. And everyone has had this experience of failing at it, which sucks. I mean, it's well, like, not only is it cool to speak a language, it's, it's really fun. Like, it's, yeah. it's fun. And it's, and it's healthy. I mean, it, uh, it, there's, there's studies showing it, it, it pushes back Alzheimer's by four or five years. Yeah. to know one language and it pushes it back further to know two or three or four. Oh, then we're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it, I mean, it makes you smarter. It makes you better at memorizing things. Like there's, there's this feeling we have like, Oh no, no smart people know languages. And it's the other way around. If you know languages, you become smarter. Uh, so I think if people get a little bit of help in terms of how do they do this, right? How do they do this so that their time is spent in an effective manner? Uh, I think a lot of people will find that language learning is a lot easier than they thought it was. Cool. It's really a doable thing. It's a lot of fun to do. Yeah. 
I agree with that. Well, thank you so much, uh, Gabriel. And where can people find you? So it's Fluent Forever. Is that with a, with a dash? It's with a dash. So fluent-forever.com. Or you can just search Google for Fluent Forever. It'll show up on Amazon, first thing, I mean. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. And I'm going to stop the recording. Okay. And then I'll thank you privately. <laughs> uh, All right. Uh, thank you. And uh, see you, everybody, uh, soon. Ciao, ciao.